the part one of essay number two, which is describe only one defining moment in your personal professional life, and you had to make a risky decision, explain why you, what you did and why you, why you did that, right? So it the, the connection has to be vice versa. If you end up picking a professional situation for the first one, you have to pick a personal situation for the second one. I've been too much repetitive now. I guess that. Um, so that was essay one. Um, the second essay says that describe a defining moment where you have to take a risk. Now, I'll give you a recent example. I'll give you a recent example from an applicant who talked about how um, they had a certain project and that project led to, oh, it was, it was actually led in a direction where there was a, they reached a point where they had, they were on the verge of losing reputation. They were on the verge of losing tons of dollars. They were on the verge of losing contract with a very, very strong client of theirs. And he said, he came in, he analyzed a couple of things, and at the end, he revived the project and took it to completion. And yeah, they had a marginal win. They did not die. And, and I don't think it's the right essay. Even if you created $20 million out of whatever you did at the end of uh, the outcome, I don't think it's a, it's a great essay. Because the, the uh, initial that the the example the the existence of risk was not there in the essay so you guys are at a stage where they've lost everything they can't the reputation is about to go and there's nothing to lose and the only thing that you can do is you walk in as a superman and say hey you know what now that we've lost everything let me just take a shot if we win i think we will celebrate or else we have written off uh this client and this project anyway so th there's no risk Risk essentially means that there was something at stake. So you had two options, plan A, plan B. And while making a decision between plan one, plan two, you had things at stake. If I do this, I'll go wrong in a certain manner. If I do that, I can also go wrong in, in, in that way. And you're trying to weigh the outcomes. You're trying to look at both the positives and the negatives of whatever you, you're trying to get into. Now, they're not interested. Once again, they're not interested in the risk. They're not interested in the situation. They're not interested in the current affairs or whatever is happening in your organization. They're interested in your thought process. So when you start this essay, it's very, very important right in the very beginning, make the risk very, very clear. Tell them what was happening. And don't throw boring details at them. If you work in IT, if you work in finance, if you work in consulting, don't throw terminologies at them, something that they can't even understand. They'll say, you know what? Yeah, this looks like so look looks like a, a ninja risk, but they may not relate to, to that. So make the risk easy to understand either it was a job loss or uh, uh, making uh, getting the leadership of the organization to invest in a new technology for you and you did the analysis of the return investments you had your career at stake you had your promotion at stake you were in the middle of applying to b schools and you know that you may not get amazing recommendation or the risk could be a life-threatening risk where you you took if you use a person's situation for this where you took uh, your team uh, to let's say Himalayas or, or you, you went to uh, uh, an expedition and how you used your brain to analyze the different outcomes of a particular situation, how you used your brains to understand how to weigh the most important variables in different, different outcomes and take it to a definitive ending and make sure that you have a vivid description in this essay starting with one, the risk. What was the risk? And a layman should be able to relate to it and get scared. Not get scared, get concerned that, you know what, if I were in your position, I think I would be worried. You know what I mean? It's like that risk. It isn't a risk where I read it and read it at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 o'clock, I don't even remember it. That's the essay you get in. Don't do that. Don't get rejected because of a, 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 a silly mistake. So define a risk, make it very clear for a layman, make the layman concerned about the situation. Then walk them through the different thought processes that you that you had, and also walk them through what were the potential outcomes of different thought processes, uh, assuming that you could have taken any of those routes. And then at the end, also tell them why you did and whatever you did. So assuming that you tell them that I, I took on the path of making people invest into this technology and I made them understand the importance of next three to four years, don't give them an obvious potential path to success. So you know what? I mean, it was not even a big deal. I didn't even know why were people not agreeing to it. This was obviously potential winning success formula. It's not that. So walk them through your thought process where how you weighed both the options and you knew 
it has to be a risk. If that's an obvious success, if your essay has an obvious success, then there is no risk. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's, it's, it's linear. It doesn't have to be linear. Second, it's very important to showcase the outcome. Showcase the impact of your actions. Showcase the impact of whatever actions you took. A layman should be able to understand what was the impact of the outcome. If you end up telling them that we incorporated or we uh, launched a new XYZ ninja technology, tell them why was that important. Tell them what was the impact of the technology on your clients or your organization. Tell them in terms of man hours saved, in terms of the amount of money that was generated, in terms of a new legacy that you created for your organization. Don't just limit yourself to stating that based on that we created our new technology and, and there you go, bam, assuming that they will understand it. Remember, if they don't understand it, if they don't get it, you, you're not getting in. So if they don't get it, you're not getting in. Very, very. I'm very certain. I'm quite certain of that. Um, so once again, define the risk, make the reader understand and be concerned about the situation. Then walk them through the thought processes. Your character should be visible in front of them while you're thinking of uh, exploring the different pros and cons. Make sure one side should, is not an obvious success formula, is not an obvious winning formula. You have, it's a, it's, a risk, it's a risky situation where your mind is diverted across both the alternatives. Make them understand why you picked whatever you picked. Showcase what was the outcome. And while you're doing all of this, while you, you have the entire situation, there's an underlying assumption in this that when you're talking about this situation, this is the most risky situation of your life. So if you cannot come up with something very personal here, or if you do not have a very strong personal story, then you might have to go back to S1 and say, hey, you know what? I might want to use a personal story in S1 so that I can use a professional story in this one, and vice versa. I think it's definitely not recommended, definitely, definitely not recommended to use professional stories for both of these essays. Not that if you use them, you will not get in, but look, looking at the odds, not recommended. Give them a very, very strong mixture of uh, a personal and professional story, primarily because third essay is again, why is the short-term, long-term goals? That's a professional essay, right? Now, I also want to discuss the second alternative in essay number two, which is uh, related to your exposure uh, uh, to diversity. It says, describe only one situation in your personal professional life when you had to interact with people from diverse backgrounds and how did it affect you and what did you, in, what did you learn? So, I know a lot of people from India applying to ISB may not have traveled internationally, may not have worked in Japan, Korea, US, Europe. If you have, that's a strong point on the resume. But if you have not, a lot of us will resort to uh, leveraging the diversity of applicants in India. A lot of us will talk about there are too many states and I, and I was working on a certain project where we had too many people from different backgrounds. Well, that, looking at the volume of applications that I've seen, looking at the volume of uh, essays that I've seen, I think that's monotonous. So you'll have to really play in the card of, uh, play the card of, of not just throwing uh, the diverse backgrounds of people but also telling them uh, more factors such as seniority of people or functional backgrounds of people or how did you leverage their different backgrounds and what was your reaction to uh, sitting in a group where you did not agree with everybody or everybody did not agree with you. I'll give you an example. Imagine that you're a, a mechanical engineer and you're sitting in a group of 25 other mechanical engineers. All of you think, think the same way. All of you have gone through the same technologies and you have a comfort factor of too much consensus around you. You know what I mean? Like you guys think the same way, you guys uh, do the things in a certain way and once you uh, uh, come across a diverse group where people could be doctors, engineers, lawyers, somebody from Europe and background, a, doc uh, a doctor from Europe or, or uh, somebody from a diverse cultural background, somebody who is very unlikely to have so many commonalities with you. Focus on not just using those diverse cultural words like we had people from so many states and all of those things. Focus on the, the disparities that you had. Focus on what were the new things that you learned about. Focus on what was the initial thing that you were uncomfortable with. Focus on how you took actions to make yourself easy, free-flowing in that new setting. Focus on what was the outcome and 
Then talk about what you learned out of that. You know what I mean? So it's like you're passing through a, a group, you're working in a setting where a lot of people around you are very, very different from how you are. Focus on your thought processes. Focus on your mindset. Focus on what was going on around you. Focus on did you get challenged to express yourself? Focus on did you see a lot of other things that you did not have an agreement with? Or focus on a lot of things that you saw for the first time and you did not have a, a conformity in your mind. You say, hey, you know what? I don't even know how that happened. Should I go forward, take action? Should I just sit back, relax, and watch how the things get done? Should I just... Um, assume leadership and impose my things on them or should I just try to generate a, a very collaborative sense of culture? What should it be? So focus on not just using adjectives of diversity, but focus on your thought processes, focus on your mindset, focus on making a redor see you right there in the essay and as I said in the essay one, he should be able to relate to you and he should be able to see himself in this situation and think that, hey, you know what? First of all, I didn't know that this can happen in diverse situations. And I can really understand what he was going through when that happened. Right? So I think that's the very, very strong way of creating a unique essay. It's not just, they will get tons of applications, they will get thousands of essays, and everybody will have different nationalities, they'll also have uh, different states, cultures, everything right there thrown on the same essay. And the only differentiating factor for, for the art comp will be that, hey, you know what? He's using states A, B, C, D, E, and this guy is using uh, states E, F, G, H, I. You know, so I don't think that's a very, very strong, very distinctive way of looking at two different essays. So focus on the character. Focus on what you went through. You know what I mean? So they're not interested in what happened. They're not interested in uh, knowing the sequence of events. They're very, very interested in what was, what were you going through when you came across diversity. And I think even if in certain part of the essays you admit that you had a hard time working through them and what you learned and how has that helped you in becoming whatever you've become now. I think that will be point well taken. And even if you're trying to use, just as the essay one, if you're trying to use something in this essay, I think you're trying to use your superlative of your life. You're trying to use the most important situation of your life, which means that it could be the first one where you were seriously challenged and you saw that 50% of your potential was not did not even exist for the first half of the entire project that you were working on. That's absolutely fine. Be vulnerable. Showcase that you were not able to move. You were not able to move your limbs around. You were not able to think through carefully. And, and while you were in the middle of the project, you start gathering a lot of new skill sets. You start gathering, developing a lot of comfort zone out of that. And how did that help you in moving over to the next stages? You can do that. I think it's, it's quite okay to be weak on the essay for some proportion and, and express this to a human being that, hey, you know what, this is what happened in my life. That's absolutely fine. And showcase why is that important for you.